Easton, the other tank engine. Based on the original story by Narrow Gage, adapted, edited, and told by July Leonard. Many engines have come and gone on the island of Sodor. For some, their time on the Northwestern Railway was so short that other engines would be forgiven who had forgotten them. This is a story about one of these, those engines. It happened shortly after Thomas left to run his branch line. It had been a few days since James's incident. He was still shut up in the sheds as punishment and was desperate to come out. But neither the Fat Controller or any crews came near him. Despite James's absence, none of the engines were strained from extra work. There were still many loaned engines from other railways in the mainland. Some would only stay a day, while others could be around for a whole month or otherwise. A more recent visitor was a tank engine from East Anglia. With Thomas having a new responsibility, the Fat Controller was quick to find a new shunter for a big station. The engine's name was Easton. A small blue LNER Holden J69 tank engine with six wheels and yellow letters GER on both sides of his tanks, which stand for the former Great Eastern Railway in the mainland, which eventually would become part of the LNER in 1923. Compared to most tank engines at the time, he looked very stylish. I have arranged to have you here for two for the next two weeks," said the fact. The fact controller said, "If you do well, I'll be more than happy to have you be a part of my railway." Easton felt very excited and was eager to please. He arranged the coaches gently and hurried about the yards with heavy trucks. The bigger engines didn't say much to him, but they did appreciate that there was another engine to sort their trains. Overall said, his attitude left much to be desired, and it became very apparent on one particular day. It had been a week since his arrival, and Eason was busy shunting on a long goods train for the other end of the line at Baron Furnace. As he stopped, he noticed a bright red engine that he'd never seen before, standing by the coal bunkers. He steamed up to Edward, who was nearby. Oi, Edward, he huffed. Who's that over there? Oh, um, that would be James. Seems the Fat Controllers finally lets him out. Let's him out? What do you mean? Easton asked, looking puzzled. Is he still stuck in the shed or something? Edward chuckled. Yes, well, it's a bit of a story. Once Edward had explained everything about the bootlace, Easton felt like he was going to wheeze with laughter. Even so, continued Edward, it's best not to keep reminding him of it. I'm sure he wants to make up for it and become really useful. Edward puffed away. Easton did listen to what Edward said, but when he shunted James's goods train alongside him, he couldn't hold it in. Here are your trucks, James, he said. Have you got some bootlaces ready? And he ran off, laughing rudely, much to James's frustration. During the next week, d I mean, during the first week, Easton had come to understand most of the Fat Controller's engines. But one exception was the former shunter at Vickerstown. He was curious to know who he was and why exactly his position changed. Later that day, Easton was having a small rest in the carriage shed when he heard an unfamiliar whistle. To his surprise, there, pulling into Knapford Station, was another blue tank engine, an LBSCR Billington E2 for that matter. He is around the same size as Easton and had two LBSCR Stroudley four-wheel coaches in tow. Adding to this, they were filled with passengers, meaning he wasn't shunting a train, but pulling one. That evening at Tidmouth Sheds, Easton was quick to question Edward about it. That will be Thomas, he explained. He used to shun coaches like you, but now he has his own branch line. His own branch line? 
exclaimed Easton. But he's a tank engine like me. How can he... How can he can get to pull trains and I can't? Because Thomas earned his branch line, grumbled Gordon, who was trying to rest. It was a reward for rescuing James from his crash in a cow field between Wellsworth and Crosby. But it's not fair. I've worked in yards for years. I deserve to pull trains after all that. Well, the word... Well, the world isn't quite that simple, retorted Gordon. If you want something, you work for it. Now please be quiet. And with that, he shut his eyes and went to sleep. Calm down, East. Calm down, Easton, whispered Edward. If you're patient and continue your good work, I'm sure the Fat Controller will give you other jobs. But Easton had no interest in patience. And I'm sorry to say that after that night, he would let his jealousy get the better of him. It was very apparent the next day. Easton was rushing about the yards and very rough with the trucks. This wasn't too unusual, but when he'd taken his anger out on the coaches, workmen and engines become concer became concerned. Eventually, the fat controller had to step in and spoke to Easton. I don't know what's wrong, what's got you so wronged up, he said sternly, but I prefer to keep it to yourself. Easton did calm down a little after that, but he couldn't help feeling envious whenever he saw Thomas pass by. He tried to take his mind off of it by bringing all of his attention to the shunting, but it did little good. A few days later, Easton was having a little rest. His driver and fireman had gone to have some tea in the worker's hut, leaving him completely alone. Just then, the yard foreman walked up to him. Excuse me, he said. But when your crew returns, can you bring Thomas's coaches to the station? Why? asked Easton. He's just having a bit of trouble steaming up. He'll be fine, though he may be leaving a little late. If you get his coaches sorted, that'll save him some time. Must be off. And he hurried away to his office. He was so quick that he didn't notice the grin appearing on Easton's face. As he had an idea. He had thought it all through just as his crew returned. Driver, he called innocently. The foreman came over. He asked us to take Thomas's passenger train. The driver stared. You sure? He replied. Yes, it seems Thomas isn't steaming well and won't be ready in time. So we'll have to take it instead. The driver and fireman had doubts, but knowing how important the branch line trains are important, and there was little time to think it over. So they set off to the, for the carriage sheds. Thomas's coaches, Annie and Clarabelle, were very surprised to see a different blue tank engine buffering up to them. Who are you? cried Annie. Hello there. My name's Easton. Thomas isn't available at the moment, so I'll be your engine today. Before the coaches can reply, they were already out of the siding and off towards Knapford Station. At the platform, Easton watched with eagerness as the passengers boarded the train. This is wonderful, he thought. Finally, a whole train to myself. As soon as the guard blew his whistle, Easton hurried out of the station, very unsmoothly. Easton was enjoying himself immensely. Buildings and other landmarks lurked by, and he adored the cool breeze. The coaches and passengers, however, were having a different experience. Slow down, slow down, cried Annie and Clarabel. We'll fly, off. we'll fly off the rails at this speed. Nonsense, snapped Easton. I'm just keeping to time. The driver fought to control his engine, but it was no good. They continued at a fast and dangerous speed. It wasn't until the first station at Droyal came into view. That's enough, Easton, yelled the driver. We have to stop now. Easton's brakes came on, and after much squeaking and squealing, they finally came to a stop but not overshooting the platform. You stupid engine, scolded the driver. Easton gulped. His confidence had dashed. Once they had backed up, the passengers stormed out of the train, feeling very sick and very cross. First that red engine, James, and now this, exclaimed a man. What is it with this ridiculous railway? Easton tried to speak up, 
but the constant buzz of furious voices drowned him out. Soon, the station master phoned the yards, and after a quick conversation, addressed the passengers. Everyone, may I please have your attention? My sincere apologies for what has happened. Another engine is on their way to take the, over the train. Now Easton was more, even more nervous. He was certain who that engine would be. Then, sure enough, pulling up alongside him was a red-faced tank engine. Oh, um, hello. Thomas, is it? stuttered Easton. I don't believe we had a proper chance to meet. What do you think you are doing? bellowed Thomas. Who do you think you are to steal my train and trying to run my branch line? His face went even more red when he saw the sorry state the coaches were in. And what have you done with Annie and Clarabel? They need to be treated with the utmost care and respect. Seems like you don't know what those words mean. All right, Thomas, that's enough, interrupted the station master. He then turned to Easton. As for you, uncouple from the train and return to the yards at Knapford at once. Without another word, Easton did just that. When, arrived, when he arrived at the yards at Knapford, he found the fact controller waiting for him. I had high hopes for you, he began. You showed great potential when you started here. Even after you started acting rough, I thought you'd settle down once I had a word with you. And then you do this. I spoke with the foreman before he returned, and he made it very clear that you were told to just shun Thomas's train, not take it out. The driver was surprised. surprised. But sir, Easton told us that we had to take the train because Thomas couldn't. So you lied as well, boomed the fat controller. I'm sorry, sir, said Easton. I only wanted to take my own train, and when I saw another tank engine do it, I got jealous. And that is the very reason why you are far from ready to pull any train, retorted the fat controller. Thomas can have little patience, too, but he has great respect for coaches and his passengers. Perhaps one day you will learn that, but you will not be learning it here. Arrangements have already been made. You will return to your river tomorrow morning. For now, I want you in the sheds out of the way. Is that clear? It is, sir, whispered Easton, and he rolled away, feeling miserable. The following morning, Easton left the island of soda behind. No one said goodbye, or at least saw him off. Nobody bothered, of course. He felt very ashamed. But he, but he knew, deep down, that the fat controller was right. There was a lot to learn indeed. The years passed. Nothing more about Easton was said until 1951, the fat controller had decided to give him another chance by being a maintenance engine, which made him become a better engine. He even brought the breakdown train to Wellsworth, after James had his accident with some tar tankers. At first, Easton started to enjoy his new job, but after a while, he eventually began to miss his old home on the mainland. His crew spoke to the fat controller, and he understood. So, arrangements were made, and Easton went back. I'm glad that he returned as a better engine, don't you?